Jazz Heads. So, uh, it's been a while since we last caught up. I've had a really, really busy week this week. Uh, it's mostly been chart, well, it's all been chart writing and teaching. Not particularly uh, brilliant stuff to turn the camera on for as well. I've been writing charts for a band in Eastern Europe, which is which the charts are going off for uh, later on today. Uh, I've also been doing plenty of big band arranging for my Hearts Jazz Festival gig, which is, we've got the rehearsal for on Sunday, so that's all sorted down. But with sitting in my office writing arrangements and setting the car going to lessons, I've been inside cooped up most of the most of the week so today is friday and i'm going to do something that i've been meaning to get to for a good couple of weeks now and that is try out some new mouthpieces for my jazz setup so currently my mouthpieces that i'm using uh from smallest to biggest are a gr uh this is a 64 sb uh which is sort of like a in terms of rim size it's like a bark seven uh it's just a little bit shallower uh, and i use that for lead work and show work and stuff where i've got to really cut through a whole band uh and pop stuff where you've got to cut through a whole auditorium and things like that um i also have a gr 66 which is a bit more like a bark three uh, i played this for years before i moved to the smaller one just to make life a bit easier in the commercial but i keep hold of this one uh, it's, it's a really nice thing to go back to. It's this sort of home um, and I use it for teaching uh, quite a lot. So when I'm using, when I'm teaching on my Yamaha, uh, I'll stick this in because this is just too bright and zingy and my students, obviously we want to go imitate sound. It's not great for them to hear, uh, whereas I can produce a more straight sound with this. I think if I did an orchestral gig, <laughs> If I ever did an orchestral gig, which I probably wouldn't, uh, I'd do it on that. Uh, now for jazz, I'm on this beast, which is from the States, a company called Harlson. Um, and this is uh, a current of a one and a half, but it's a bit deeper as well. It's like almost like a B cup. Uh, so it produces a massive sound. It's so heavy. It's got this raw brass booster on it that is huge. Um, I'm really struggling with this at the moment now. I used to be able to play lead on this uh, when I was back when I was a student, uh, but I think the sheer amount of playing you're doing when you're a student, you're practicing for hours a day, you've got a lesson and then probably a gig in the evening. You know, you're playing six, seven hours a day and the amount of muscle that you actually build up, you can play these things. Uh, nowadays, where I've got chart writing and teaching and stuff, and I've probably got an hour, an hour and a half, if I'm lucky for practice a day, I don't get a chance to build up enough muscle to do it. So I need something probably, I think I'm gonna to have to find something a bit smaller that can make the same sound that just makes life a bit easier. So I'm gonna head into town uh, and visit Phil Parker's, the best trumpet shop in London. <laughs> going to try and sort out this mouthpiece situation.
so we're down to two. Both Monet mouthpieces. B2S3, which is Winton's mouthpiece. And a tiny, slightly larger one. This one at the moment is sounding pretty good in the little rooms, but they've let me have a big room downstairs. B2S3. So I'm back from uh, London and I have my new mouthpiece. I'm on it. B2S3. Um, in the shop I got to try, I tried four, uh, three of which were Monets um, and one was a Warburton which was quite interesting. I haven't played Warburtons for six, five or six years. Um, I tried a 3MD uh, and it felt comfortable again because I used to play the threes, um, and it really opened up on the on the on my horn. I was quite pleasantly surprised with it. But this thing, oh my word, it was huge. The sound was brilliant, uh, but soft as well. Nice sort of really lovely tone to it. Um, so I'm gonna have a lot of fun experimenting with that. Um, it was between this size and one that was slightly smaller. It was so close between the two, and actually I ended up mixing the boxes up, and I didn't know which one I was playing, because um, I didn't check the side. So it was really a blind test, and this one came out on, on top. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful mouthpiece. So it's gold plate. Lovely, I love the shape. I remember from when I played the Monets in the past, the shape, it just feels really comfortable on your face straight away. Um, and they look really cool. It's going to look really great in the raw brass horn. Um, I know they are pricier than some other mouthpieces out there, but the way I see it is that uh, I'm not using cheap gear. I'm using a custom-made trumpet for me, and the cost of a cost of one of these mouthpieces is about ten percent of the cost of a horn. So if you're using, it makes such a difference. Something that 10% of the cost of it makes a huge difference. Why, why not? Why not? Where does this fit in with the profile of my mouthpieces now? So it's bigger than the two GRs I have. Um, it's probably, well, I mean, Monet say that it's the same size as a one and a half, but they always feel like they come up small, uh, the Monet's, the Monet mouthpieces always feel, just they feel they come up a bit small. So you can always probably go a size up on them than you think you are. Um, because they're so responsive and so easy to play as well, you tend not to feel it. Um, so yeah, it's it's lighter, uh, but sounds bigger than what my jazz setup was already. It sounds richer than the GRs I have. The GRs obviously sizzle a lot more in that top register, uh, and once you get above high C, um, they wow, they 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 they, they come into their own. But um, for the work I'm going to do on this, this is going to be really, really perfect and it's going to fit nicely in that profile. So I've got my Jazz Festival rehearsal on Sunday, uh, so I'm going to try and get a bit of uh, footage about what we're up to there, uh, so you can hear what kind of things we're going to be doing. And then we've actually got the Jazz Festival next week, which will be really cool. So I'll hopefully I'll get the opportunity to get the camera on a couple of times next week and get a couple of vlogs out to you. If you like what you're seeing, remember, subscribe, like, um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.